Well, certainly um, celebrate your accomplishments. Don't miss them. Don't sweep them under, under the rug. I think for a long time I thought if I, if I acknowledged them, it would make me complacent. There is nothing in the history of my life that points to complacency. I'm just not wired that way, right? I'm always about what's next. But um, you'll, you'll, miss a, you'll miss a lot of things. You'll miss people and relationships and moments if you ignore the present. And so, and you'll also miss the lessons. You know, one of my greatest fears is that something bad will happen to me and then, and if you believe that everything happens for a reason, which I do to an extent, I'm always afraid I'll miss the lesson. Like, what was the point? <laughs> so don't worry about that. Don't, you know, don't have, don't tie yourself, also don't tie yourself to a timeline. I am, I'm enormously guilty of that. And it's caused me mostly nothing but suffering. Meet your deadlines, but don't tie yourself to a timeline. Be on time. Mm. For you, whatever that is. Yeah. But if you hadn't pushed yourself at 20, then maybe none of what followed would have happened. I think that's true, but I also think there's a way I could have in worried less and enjoyed more of this of these extraordinary successes that had where opportunity had been met and all the right things had come together, mm -hmm. and now we had this great this, you know, this great thing, this great event that I, that I could have, I like to think, and I would like for any young person who is coming up no matter what they're doing, that you don't, they're not mutually exclusive. That drive and that ambition doesn't only exist if you also celebrate your achievements, that you can have them both. Is there any one piece of advice someone gave you or that you, they, you wish they had given you when you were first starting <laughs> your career? Uh, you know, nobody ever gave me advice, but I do remember hearing over and over again there's sort of this joke like, oh God, you're gonna go into show business, eek, if there's anything else you can do, yeah. please go do that. But they never said why. And I remember thinking, of course, at the time when I started out, I said, well, fuck you, it'll just be different for me because <laughs> I'm gonna rule the world. And it'll be fine. <laughs> and in many ways, it has been way more than fine. But what I feel like um, in the last, really, maybe only five or six years, my, I, kept, I kept thinking about why does everybody say that? Why is there this dread about going to show business? And for me, I would say because it made me care about things that don't matter. And that's a really destructive and heavy load to bear, I think. And by that I mean, um, you know, I was bulimic for 24 years. Um, there's a lot of emphasis in our business and in this town and on television and on film, certainly about um, women's age, how we look, mm -hmm. you know, how are you still in good shape? Um, are you in too good shape? You know, now I like go in to read for, because I'm 52, so you go in to read for a role in their 50s, and they're like, oh, oh, well, you don't look like 50. And I'm like, well, what does 50 look like? Yeah. You know, I, I know what you're saying, but why is it so narrow? And why there's just no, you know, they always say, oh, yeah, you know, a woman, you're cast out by the time you're 40 in Hollywood. I'd say, eh, it's probably closer to about 36.